So if you've never heard of the Josephus problem, the idea is you have some people that were hiding in a cave, and um, I think it was the Romans that were after them or something, and they're like, oh, okay, well, our cause is lost, so let's just off ourselves so that we don't you know, suffer a horrible fate in the hands of our captors. And they're like, okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot every other person. Now, I know this shoots every third person. That's because we're doing the modified Josephus, but just in case you've never heard of this before. So the first guy's like, okay, I'm good. And then they shoot themselves. And then you're good. And then you shoot yourself. And then you're good. And you shoot yourself. All right. Then we're good. And then now this one has gotten out. And then we go one, two. So that one's out. And then he survives again. And this one's out. So like it gets back to seven. And then he has a choice. So he's like, am I actually going to off myself? Or am I just going to try to get out of this flipping cave so I can, you know, do other things? So um, it's a it's a pretty interesting math problem. There's some pretty neat stuff in it. Um, the modified Josephus is very, very similar. Just the only difference is we're going to shoot every third person. So we're like, good, good, no. 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 And now with these left over, you have good, good, and then no, and then the fourth person survives. So um, the, that's the modified Josephus problem. Now, there's a couple of ways to look at this from a uh, math perspective that actually makes it pretty interesting. So we're going to start off by saying that we have 10 people. And they're going to do this thing where they're like, kind of off each other or themselves or however you want to do it. All right. But so the question is, if I'm in this situation, where should I stand so that at the end of the day, I can be like, wait, hold on a second. I think I'm going to, you know, like offer them some candy and see if that helps. So the idea is if we go one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three, um, that before we go ahead and go to the next level, what we want to do is have them assign a new number. So number 10 becomes, um, after number 10 is 1, but 1 becomes 11, and um, number 2 becomes 12. Ah, writing is hard. 11 and then 12. 14 becomes 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, so once you go through a round, everybody gets a new number. Then I can go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Now I'm going to assign everybody a new number again. So I've got 18. 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, so I'm going to count again. One, two, he's out. One, two, he's out. Now everybody gets a new number again. You're like, this is super fun. I'm so glad. Um, and then we go 23, 24, 25. So I was at 22. So one, two, three. And uh, I got to make new numbers. 26, 27. All right, so he was here. One, two, three. 27 is out. And then just for fun, he like points at himself and he's like, oh, now I'm number 28. And I'm good. Oh, now I'm number 29. Oh, I'm good. Oh, now I'm number 30. Ah, okay. So now he's done. Okay. So the reason that we would do this really odd numbering system is that we can go on and look and see that there is actually a pattern that not surprisingly, everybody who gets taken out by this has a multiple of three as a number. So it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. So those are all the people that uh, made it. So the last guy standing, the last guy standing, I don't know why these are guys, they don't have to be guys, standing, the last guy standing had a number of 30. And that's not surprising because it's 3 times 10. And that's going to equal 30, right? Because we killed every third person and there were 10 people originally. So you want to stand in the spot of the number that is eventually going to be 30, okay? Another thing that you can notice is that a person who was the jth person executed had a number of 3J. So the first person executed had a number of 3. The second person executed had a number of 6. The third person had a number of 9. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to look a little bit more carefully at this, okay? So <laughs> this is going to be super fun. So again, we had our numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so as soon as 3 is offed, okay, so 3 is gone. Now, as soon as 3 is gone, we could go ahead and relabel 11, uh, 1 and 2 to be 11 and 12. All right, um, now something, I'm going to rewrite it this way and see if you can kind of get it. So 11 is actually 10 plus 1. And 12 is 10 plus 2. You're like, wow, I am so glad I'm watching this video. I'm learning so much. No, but seriously. Okay, so um, another way to write it is to say 10. Hold on. Let's do it this way. I'm going to do this, and we'll see if we can get it. All right. So I've got 4, 5, and then 6 is out. 
Now, whenever 6 is out, we can go ahead and relabel these guys 13 and 14. That's going to be 10 plus 3, and this is 10 plus 4. And you're like, wow, again, phenomenal math you're doing here, woman. I know. So I've got 15 and 16, so that's 10 plus 5 and 10 plus 6. All right. And then 10 is going to be 17, which we can't really make a thing about yet. So um, if we look at these, what we can tell is this is the, um, what we could say is that 1 and 2 survive after the zeroth elimination. And that basically means that no one has been executed yet and they've already survived. So that's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's not going to last, but that's pretty cool. And if we look at the other two, 4 and 5 and 7 and 8 and even 10, they have survived after the first, second, and third eliminations. Now, if we pay attention to those numbers, we have the number 0, the number 1, the number 2, and the number 3. What we can actually do is we can go and we can relate those numbers to that 10 plus 1. So what we really have is 10 plus 2 times 0 plus 1. And this one is 10 plus 2 times 0 plus 2. <laughs> yes, I know. All right, so then we have 10 plus 2 times, now this is going to be 1 plus 1, and not shockingly, 10 plus 2 times 1 Plus two, and you're like, well, why don't you? I mean, you could. I mean, you could index this slightly differently and get slightly different answers. But there's a very, very specific way we're doing this, or reason why we're doing this. So, looking at these, we can see that there's actually a pattern, and we love patterns whenever we're doing discrete mathematics. So, basically, as I'm going through here, I can see that there is a pattern in that my current number, whatever the current number I am, current number I'll call it capital N, is going to be equal to ten plus 2k plus 1, or it's going to be equal to n plus 2k plus 2 after k eliminations. And it just depends on how many eliminations I've survived as to what my current number is. Okay, now if I solve for k, solve for k um, without too much effort, I can either get k is equal to n minus 10 plus 1 or minus 1 over 2, or k is equal to n minus 10 minus 2 over 2. And again, the reason that we're keeping the n, the, the 10 and the 1 separated is because this 10 represents the number of elements that we originally had in there, number of people we, sorry, this is in math, this is like fun, look, math, um, <laughs> sorry, um, the number of people that were originally in the cave, and the, the 1 and the 2 are also relevant. So we, we don't want to get those numbers kind of combined. We just want to leave it out. So basically the idea is um, what round was just survived by number 13? So like if we knew that an element had a number 13, um, what round did it just survive? We could say, okay, well, it's either 13 minus 10 minus 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1, or it's 13 minus 10 minus 2 over 2, which is equal to one half. So clearly I didn't just survive the half round, um, I survived the first round. And the, it's or for a reason, okay, so it's, it's the same thing. Now if we want to do the same thing by the 14th, by number 14, what round did number 14 survive then? We've got 14 minus 10 minus 1 over 2, and that's going to give us three halves, which again makes no sense. But that's okay because we have this other element over here that we can go 14 minus 10 minus 2 over 2. That gets us 2 over 2, which equals 1, which is correct. So number 14 also survived the first round. So that's what we can see. Number 13 and 14, they survived after the first elimination. So that is the same information that we had before. So that's pretty cool. So, now one of the things you might notice is that in the case where we had the one, it was either one or a half. And over here, it was either um, three halves or a one. So, if we are looking at these, it would be really, really nice if instead of having an or that we had a mathematical function. So, instead of having either this one or this one, let's pick one and then choose a function to go with it. And what we can actually discover is that over here, we can either use the one on the left with a floor function because um, it's either one or the floor of three halves, which would be equal to one. So we can either use the floor of that one 
or we could also use the ceiling of the other one because the ceiling of one half would have given us one and one just would have given us one. Now we're gonna stick with using the floor function um, just because an arbitrary decision to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and officially say that K is gonna be equal to the floor of N minus 10 minus one over two, just like that. Now, <laughs> that works, but unfortunately, if I really wanna know where I need to stand, I need to work backwards. So if I've got these numbers here, and I've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So remember that these are associated with k equals zero, these are associated with k equals one, k equals two, and k equals three. Okay, now these had original positions of one and two, one and two, four and five, seven and eight, and 10. The question is, can I represent one, two, four, five, seven, eight, and 10 using just k's and the idea that I shot every third person? And the answer is, of course, yes. I can represent one as being three times zero plus one. And I can represent two as being three times, what do you call that number? Um, zero, there you go, <laughs> um, plus two. Similarly, I can represent everything else in my pattern by representing it as either three times k plus one. And this is where things get pretty awesome. So I can say that my previous n is equal to three k plus one, or n previous is equal to three k plus two. Awesome, awesome, phenomenal. Okay, so now we are going to do some more math. Because we remember, remember, remember that n was equal to, I'll write it over here. So we, ah, come here. <laughs> we remember that n was equal to 10 plus 2k plus 1, or it was equal to n, uh, n was equal to 10 plus 2k plus 2. So we can do this weird kind of a substitution here um, where I'm actually going to solve for 1 and 2. Well, it keeps going all over the board. Um, so I'm going to solve for the constant, which is just a strange thing to do. And this is because you figured this out because you're like a lonely grad student. You're like, oh, I'm lonely. I don't have any friends. I could solve for the constant and see if that helps. Maybe that will have the friends are running. Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, I'm going to solve for the constant. And the reason that I'm going to do that is I have this constant that matches with this constant and this constant which matches with this constant, which means that I can plug in n previous and get 3k plus n minus 10 minus 2k and n previous is equal to 3k plus n minus 10 minus 2k. So they actually end up matching. Um, which is pretty cool because they come together. Instead of having these ors in here, I get that the n previous is equal to k plus n minus 10. But I actually know the value for k. Um, I figured that out earlier. So now I have that n previous is going to be equal to that value for k, which is n minus 10 minus 1 over 2 plus n minus 10. Now, you can do a spot check with this, so let's just check uh, number 20. So if n was equal to 20, its previous location would have been 20 minus 10 minus 1 over 2 floor plus 20 minus 10. So we've got, what is that, floor of 9 halves plus 10, um, so that's 4 plus 10 is equal to 14. So the question is, n at 20, they used to stand at 14. And we've got to go way up here to find that. But n at 20, come here, girl. 20 did stand at 14 before. So that is the correct answer. It just, <laughs> it's a very weird way of approaching it. So I can always just use this and work backwards as a starting point and to come up with um, where I wanted to be. So ideally, I should start it at 30 and then work backwards, and then just keep working backwards and backwards and backwards to see where I should have started at. But let's go ahead and generalize. Let's let, come here, let n 
equal the length of original list. So in our case, that would be 10. So um, what we have is um, the ultimate survivor had a number, um, survivor had a number of 3n. So we can actually come up with some kind of a pseudocode because this is a recursive, well, not really a recursive, but we can, we can look at this as a while loop. So to code this, uh, the idea is that we want to start with my number of equal to 3n. I'm going to shoot every third person, and there's n people in the list. I want to be the 30th person. And as long as our current number is greater than the um, total number of people in line, then n is going to be equal to the floor of n minus, and I'm just getting this from this right here. So I'm just taking this, and everywhere I see a 10, I'm putting an n. So I have n minus big N minus little n over 1 divided by 2 floor plus n minus n. And then at the end of the day, I'm just going to display whatever that n is. So now I have this little algorithm that, you know, next time this happens, I can pull this out and I can be like, hold on, guys, let me run my code right quick and see where I'm going to stand in this in this list. So um, this is something pretty cool. And what's neat about getting into this form is you can do some further manipulation and generalize it even further. And I'll make another whole video on that.